I spent eight years, all eight years, uh, in the uh, Clinton White House on the economic team. I had a fairly broad portfolio. Um, it did include aviation for, uh, for part of the time. And <clears throat> early on, um, a lot of you were not, were, are too young to remember this, but when uh, President Clinton took office, the, uh, the airline industry was in very bad shape uh, economically. The country was coming out of a, a, it was in a jobless recovery. And the airline industry in particular was in bad shape. And the first um, trip that uh, President Clinton took out, out of Washington, D.C. in February or March of 93, um, he made a stop in, uh, in Washington at a Boeing facility, met with all of the airline CEOs and aerospace CEOs uh, to talk about what could they do to get the airline industry back on its feet because President Clinton's view was that we, we can't get the, the economy back on its feet without getting the airline industry healthy again. Uh, he created a, uh, he announced the creation of a commission uh, that day. Uh, uh, it was uh, chaired by uh, Jerry Belisles, former governor, Democratic governor of uh, Virginia. Uh, and it was a classic blue ribbon commission on the future or the health of the airline industry. And it met very quickly. It was a six, six month turnaround Thing. This is the report that they uh, they issued in August of '93. Yeah, so that that came out really quickly. One recommendation, it was one of, of many, but was to uh, to spin off the air traffic portion of the FAA, the portion of the FAA that uh, uh, the non-regulatory portion as a separate entity. <clears throat> At the time, there were four countries uh, that had done that: the UK. Uh, Germany, Australia, and New Zealand, and uh, and as I say, it had been debated for a long time. There had been a lot of proposals and discussion about doing it. They recommended doing it. Vice President Gore picked it up, made it part of uh, reinventing uh, government, and put 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 in process a year-long study led by the Secretary of Transportation, Federico. Uh, Pena, which John Hennigan was involved in, to flesh this out and come up with a uh, a concrete uh, proposal. The concrete proposal, <coughs> which we proposed in uh, legislatively in 1995, was something called USATS, U.S. Air Traffic Services Inc. USATS, and USATS was the model for USATS was Air New Zealand, roughly. I mean, it was it was um, it was roughly based on Air New Zealand. It was an independent government corporation with a with a board uh, with some continued uh, with uh, arm's length regulation by the uh, FAA and the ability to go to the capital markets uh, with with permission from the Secretary of the Treasury uh, to go to the capital markets and borrow up to fifteen billion dollars. And the idea was that it would be able to operate like a like a business. Um, uh, now why did we w w why did we think that was a good idea? Why did this this study uh, conclude that it was a good idea? There are a couple couple reasons. <clears throat> First of all, and this is, this is not well understood, so I'm really going to stress it because I think it's really, really critical. Air traffic control, the controllers, the towers, the non-regulatory part of the FAA is not inherently governmental. We looked at that. Other people had looked at it. We looked at it. We said, yep, this is not an inherently governmental activity. What does that mean? It is, it's very safety critical like every part of the aviation industry. Um, but it's, it, it's, and it's a very sophisticated and it's very high tech, but it is a, it is basically a production line. It is a, an op, it's operational in nature. It is a high tech production line. Uh, it does not require policy judgments. It does not require judgments about trade-offs like the regulatory side, like, like the regulatory side of the FAA or any other regulatory agency. That's what makes something inherently governmental when it requires those sort of trade-offs that you cannot describe in a contract or a, 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 a performance contract. Air traffic control it, it is, in, it is not inherently uh, governmental. The, 
other countries were starting to figure that out. There's, there's reasons why I think historically people had thought that it was, but countries were beginning to figure it out. We concluded the same. <clears throat> Second, precisely because air traffic control is not inherently governmental, because it is, it has the, uh, the essential qualities of a business, it was uh, not functioning uh, as well as it could being in out of the FAA. And uh, you know, my, my sort of bumper sticker summary of this is that, uh, that the air traffic control system is a 24-7 high-tech service business trapped in a command and control regulatory agency that is uh, uh, burdened by uh, government procurement rules, by a uh, financing system that doesn't allow for ca capital budgeting, and micromanaged by you guys, by, by Congress. Um, that, is a, that is a fundamental cultural mismatch between the business-like nature of this high-tech activity and the, the, the place it is being done. That, that is, in essence, why <clears throat> we in the Clinton administration propose this. Third, um, uh, there's a conflict of interest. When you have the FAA uh, as both the regulator and the operator, that is a, that is a conflict of interest. Now, that was not our, the leading reason that we did this, but it was a, it was a consideration. Uh, and since then, ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, has, has directed countries to separate the regulator from the, for, from the operator. And if you look at, at um, well, since, since that time, most countries have done this. They have spun off air traffic control. David Batchelor is here from the European Union, and he will tell you that in a lot of cases, they have done that to deal with that conflict of, of interest. Uh, so, um, so those were the, the main reasons that uh, that we we did uh, we did this. Um, the um, um, the Nav Canada did not exist yet. I think uh, we'll talk more about that. I think it is it is. Uh, uh, I am a big believer in the Nav Canada model, which is a user cooperative model. Let me, let me just say one, one thing. Air traffic control is a, it is a, remains a monopoly. For the time being, the technology is such that it is, it is a business, but it remains a natural monopoly. I don't think that is necessarily going to be the case forever, but it is for now. That's what makes this so hard. That's why we're all here. <laughs> if it were, if it, if you could have competition, it would be like, uh, like other things that you can privatize and rely on the market. It isn't. It remains a natural monopoly. So you have to deal with that. And there are different models. The model we chose in 1995 was a government corporation. Since then, the Canadians, I think, have broken the code and come up with a better model, the user co-op, where the stakeholders manage the organization and it creates better incentives in terms of keeping costs low and investing at the, uh, at the optimal level. So um, we proposed USATs in 1995. USATs was dead on arrival when it got to uh, Capitol Hill. I think that uh, there were some members who felt that it went, uh, that it didn't go far enough, and others that felt that it went too far. I asked a colleague uh, recently who who uh, worked on it what whether he thought that was the inevitable outcome, and he said. Yeah, you know, we 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 thought that probably is what was going to happen, but we really thought it was the right thing to do. We really thought it was the right thing to do, and I think that at the end of the day, uh, it is uh, is the reason that we we push for it. I um, uh, we <clears throat> several years later, uh, realizing that we weren't going to be able to spin off air traffic control entirely, we created, and it was one of the last things President Clinton did, was to issue an executive order creating the air traffic organization, creating a performance-based organization within the FAA. So telling the FAA, separate within the FAA, separate entirely the regulatory part from the operational part put the operational part in a performance-based organization. It's called the Air Traffic Organization. Uh, and that was stood up in 2004 with uh, a senior airline executive, Russ Chu, in charge of it. Uh, and I think it's, it has definitely helped, but it's not, 
uh, it's not enough enough.